Hi, I'm Jeff Holden with SMB Capital. Uh, today we talk with a developing trader about a trade that um, he put together and, and he identified the setup and he identified the, the trade, he identified the catalyst, he identified the setup and he identified the trade really well. As we go through it, we really talk about how important tape is and reading the tape is in certain situations where you have a specific catalyst setup and trade. This is one of those where you have to know what the tape is saying in order to effectively manage your trade. Uh, we also talk with him about how he actually works a little too hard in the trade than he needs to. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's really a cool video where uh, hopefully you can learn a lot. Well, hello guys, my name is Yanni. Uh, today I'm going to be presenting a relative strength higher time frame breakout on Oxy that happened on, on Monday. So the trade strategy, uh, getting into the trade criteria, we look for a clear higher time frame resistance area with a strong technical pattern. And ideally this is going to be near 52 week highs. The stock gets over that key level within the opening drive. So this is going to be a fast trade within the first 15 minutes of the day. And we want to define what is relative strength. So for me, that is just an uptrend versus downtrend in the overall indexes. So I identified that XLE was relatively stronger than most of the other uh, indexes, such as XLK. Ideally, we want to have some catalysts behind this breakout. How did you identify that it was stronger? What metrics did you use for that? I think it was just from a discretionary point, like just looking at the charts between XLE and XLK, I noticed that XLE was much stronger than XLK. For example, XLE, the energy sector was just an overall uptrend while other indexes were downtrending. So that's how I defined like relative strength. That, that makes sense, okay. And then for the trade plan, our entry, we're just going to get long once offers lift an important technical level. So for this trade, this was gonna be uh, 65 was 52 week highs. And we're gonna get in with 20% of our daily stop. And this is gonna act as pretty much a momentum breakout type trade. Uh, so our risk is gonna be under lows of the day. And we're gonna move my uh, we're gonna move the stop loss to break even if the trade is working. Uh, and then places to add. So any clear pullbacks on lower volume to view up or moving averages, risking under uh, the higher low is gonna be another area to add. Reasons to sell in my favor. So if it trades over one ATR off open very aggressively, that's going to be uh, something that I want to take off. If it hits any indicator, so I use standard pivot points um, and Bollinger Band. So if it hits those important indicators that I use from a technical standpoint and rejects that aggressively, that's another reason to sell. And I'm going to be taking 10% off just to pay myself every $1 move. And then uh, 50% into one ATR if we don't get that first ATR off the open. And then any reasons to get flat is if it trades under any key moving averages or indicators. So say we get in the momentum breakout and it can hold VWAP, it uh, can't trade above a pivot point, that's a reason to get flat. If it breaks an intraday trend line or if we see a steep sell off in the overall market or any index that I'm tracking. So we're going to be looking at XLE, US oil to see if uh, anything unusual happens in those indexes that makes me get flat in this overall trade. So with the big picture, we had some developments from the Russia-Ukraine situation. We had uh, Turkey, Finland, and Sweden addressing NATO that day. And we also had uh, day three of an oversold bounce on a lot of growth names, which I'll get into in some uh, charts in the next few slides, but the overall market was somewhat uh, bouncing from oversold conditions. And we did see some relative strength in XLE and US oil and a lot of other peers such, such as Chevron, ExxonMobil, DVN, uh, really strong charts as well. Um, we saw a range bound market on SPY between the 405 and uh, 395 areas. And inflation and rate hike pressure from the Fed still remains an overall concern for investors. And that is something that is kind of important for this trade as well. 
If you want to learn three more real-world setups that our traders use, including the simple setup that we teach all of our new traders, and the setup that turned one of our traders into a seven-figure big money earner, check out the free webinar that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing now at the top right-hand corner of your screen. That will open up the free registration page in a new window, so don't worry, you won't lose this video. You can also visit tradingworkshop.com to register for this free intensive workshop. You're gonna learn more in a couple of hours from this trading workshop than from years of online education. So getting into the big picture, uh, overall the S&P 500 is in a really steep downtrend here, but we did uh, bounce back from oversold conditions here. And this is day three where we're trading inside a range between the five day moving average and the 10 day moving average. And um, Yep, that's the S&P 500. And then this is the energy sectors on the left, XLE. And that's much, much stronger than the S&P 500 from the previous chart. And we could also see that US oil is somewhat curling up from a technical standpoint, breaking out of this range. So that's super important for this trade as well. I have an A minus uh, and B plus trade idea. And that is pretty much 20% of my daily stop. We'll get into the technology slide and a few other slides, but the earnings report was actually pretty important and I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, so here are some overall statistics on Oxy. A pretty big range for a $60 stock, I thought. It's 3.8 ATR for an oil name. Uh, the beta is relatively high and also uh, the short float is around 5%, which it's pretty good considering this is going to be a 52 week high uh, breakout. So I like to see a little bit of short float in there as well. So here is our technical analysis on Oxy. As you can see, we were, we were range bound for a few months and now we are testing near those highs. So from a technical standpoint, I would rate this setup maybe a minus or an A. Um, and that 65 level being very crucial. Here's our one hour chart. So we reported earnings a few days ago, consolidated. And this would be essentially a day two from a uh, higher time frame breakout into here. Our intraday chart. So we had a strong close on Friday. We gapped up above that consolidation near 52 week highs. And then we broke out of that 65 level and trended really strong on the day. For this trade in particular off of this setup, I think that the tape is so important. So I really think we should take our time and, and actually go through it. Um, you know, so let's, let's, let's go through it here. So the first area of the tape I want to highlight is the 60, the test of the 65 level. Ideally on like a breakout, especially on like, for example, a growth name, I want to see the offers lift that level and we aggressively trade to the next area of resistance very quick. Um, for something like an energy name, I actually give it a, li a little bit more time. If it's fighting for that level, that's okay. But by no means should it trade underneath the lows of the day. And that means that the trade is uh, not working. So. I'm going to keep an eye on that 65 level and see how the, the tape reacts there. So this is right on the open? Yeah, this is literally right on the open. Like we just opened up here. I could actually back up a little bit. So this is the open right here. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you saw that really big offer. Let me see if I can slow that down actually really quickly. So we get into that 65 level. It, it happened really quick, but you can notice that there was a lot of offers at that 65 level. You see right there? Yeah. So uh, that's how I know that if that lifts, that this should break out pretty aggressively. Yeah, and plus you have you have stuff stacked before that. So if pause, go back five seconds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have some stacking into here. You have stuff stacked bit. stacked before that as well. And so that's that's really interesting information because you know it only takes a moment to to kind of think about it. But if you see that, it's like, okay, this this is a really important level. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So 
So once that lift, I'd probably get long into here, risking low of the day. And what do you want to see now on the on the tape? Like now you're above 65, right? Yeah, so if we get pull into 65 or to view up, uh, I want to see those get bid up pretty aggressively. Like I said, this is an oil name, so it doesn't have to be that aggressive. But in this area, we should see overall buying. So like this pull-in right here is actually super important. I, I'm going to stop out if it gets above the VWAP, which was 64, 67, right? Roughly about that. So uh, I just want to highlight right here that we're going to get bid up from this level. You see another offer there at 65 and then we lift again. So this is, right here would give me confidence to stay long here. Really, really good price action so far because we then cleared to new highs, right? We didn't go above 65 and kind of hang out for a little bit. We actually like sprayed up to new highs. So now you have that 64, what was it, 64.80 or something like that, where you don't even really need to get it to low of day. It really shouldn't drop 64.80 at this point. Yeah. If this is gonna be a really good trade, so. But I am noticing any pullbacks into 65, that 6480-ish area, the VWAP is being bought up. So that's exactly what we want to see. So just speeding this up a little bit. I think we pretty much stay around here for a little bit. Which is even better, right? Because we're above the level. Mm -hmm. We are spending time above the level. They keep trying to take it lower and are unable to. So I think that those are all huge checks in your favor. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I actually believe I took a little bit off into here. So like one of my reasons to sell is if it hits a standard pivot point and rejects that price. Notice how we came into that 65.45 and quickly snapped that. That's something I don't want to see if this is going to be like a really strong momentum breakout. I kind of want to see us get above these levels aggressively. So. I think I took off like 10% into there. It's tough that you're only looking at a five minute chart here. Um, the reason why that's tough is you're not seeing how much consolidation is occurring. Like where's the consolidation occurring? And like you can kind of piece it together off the tape but like, I'm really surprised you're not using a one minute chart here or a tick chart or something like that, particularly on this setup, because this setup is such that you want to see exactly what happened, but in your chart, you can't see it at all because it's a five minute thing. You know, when you're transitioning into, into a trade, when you know it's a trade to hold, then you can use a five minute bar. But right now, like based on the tape, you could update the, the stop to probably like 65.15 but you can't see it on the five minute. So you're still probably risking, you know, at least in that bar, you're risking the 64 and a half, right? Yeah, I think at this point, I'm pretty much risking under 64 or 80 still. Yeah, okay. But like, we, it's been, you know, three or four minutes higher. So you could probably update your stop if you have a better, if you have more, more current information. Yeah. And I think that's pretty important too, because actually what I did here was I noticed that the SPY and Qs were starting to get a little steep to the downside. And I thought that we were gonna have pretty much this gap fill day on the SPYs and Qs. Now at the time, XLE was pretty strong. I should have had a bad chart pulled up here. I have it on my other monitor looking at it. But um, at this time, like, I was thinking that if this was gonna be a really strong breakout, we shouldn't really be testing the 65 on this next five minute bar. So when we start to reject into here and the spies start falling, 
I actually take off the position. And we'll go over my executions in the next few slides more in depth, but um, I'll, I'll just note it, show you what happens here on yep. Oxy tape. So that's a really strong rebid right there. Meanwhile, the spies and, and queues are falling. Let me make new highs there. And this is a really nice uh, reclaim of that level once we test it into the VWAP. Where's that offer at 66? That could be somewhat important. If that rejects that price, that's another reason to sell if it doesn't lift there. And we get above that really nicely. The thing that's interesting here to me and you can keep playing the tape and we'll call out if we see anything interesting. But the thing that, that I find so fascinating is, you know, reading the tape is a skill, right? And there are times and setups that you know you're going to have to read the tape more because the trades that you're going to get out of those setups are going to be more tape specific. Um, this opening drive trade is incredibly tape specific, uh, not just in in you know, your initial entry and, and your, your target, but more importantly in your trade management. Um, you know, for an opening drive trade, you have no idea if this is a huge opening drive, this could go to 70 in, in you know, on this day. You're looking for signs that it, that it will do that. 70 would be what, two ATRs? It'd be up six bucks, but you know, an ATR, almost two ATRs. So, you know, how many breakouts have we seen that have gone up two ATRs? Like a lot, right? Um, so it really wouldn't be that surprising. But you're having to make a decision very quickly. And that's where the tape can be kind of the best opportunity. What I saw from this was you had that move up to 65. You had a lot of selling or attempted selling at 65. None of it took it lower. And, you know, then the bidders were just spraying it up. And... Not only did you did the tape say, listen, I'm not stopping at 65, but it also probably trapped some shorts who then are, you know, who are thinking, oh, this is going to fail at 65 and, it, you know, it's going to come in and it just didn't because it spent so much time there. You know, this isn't like 10 minutes straight up. This was about, you know, a minute straight up and then four minutes sideways and then another minute or two up, which is a very different set set of, of, of trades that you're really looking for. Um, so your ability to read the tape in this particular trade on this breakout setup is something that you, you really need to make sure that you're maximizing. And, you know, you don't want to be selling too early here. You just want to be selling when you have a reason to. Yeah, and I think I pretty much stick with this opening drive here. And yeah, the next pull in that I wanted to highlight was into here. I'll just show this really quickly. So we get into the next area, my next target, which was 66.80. And we pull uh, into the VWAP. I think this is an area that I need to be a little bit more aggressive and adding. And I'll just show you how clear it is on the tape here. Yeah, absolutely. If you've taken if you've taken more than 40% off, you have to be really aggressive on the pull in. Mm -hmm.
So SPY is selling off here, trying to fill that gap. We're getting that pull in into VWAP. So once it holds that 66.20 for the second time, I think right there is not a bad spot to add. It's tough because if you're if you're adding there, you really that's a momentum add. You need you're you're playing for it to continue that breakout. You can't really add there and then not hit out of that if it drops below, because then your average is going to be kind of in a weird spot. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Like if it if it tries to if you add sixty six twenty and it tries to it tries to lift here to sixty six fifty sixty six sixty and then they sell it right back down. You have to hit out of that ad. Like you you just can't because then you're 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 running the risk of what if it reverses there. Then you're you, you're adding from bad prices and all that stuff. It, remember when you're making tape trades, it's never about what happens when it works. What happens when it works is you you kind of look for continuation. When you're making tape trades, you it's really about how do you use that information when it doesn't work or when it stops working. That's really the beauty in tape trades. Is if you're buying into that second attempt at 6620, you know if it doesn't if, if it doesn't like actually lift and move exactly like this, you're basically out. You know you don't have a reason to stay in it if you're making a tape trade there. But that's the best part about a tape trade. You bought it at 66.20, you're risking maybe 15 cents and it goes up 80 cents. So you don't have to be right that often if you can control your risk because your risk reward is so good if you're if you're using the tape the right way. So there's another offer there at around 67 and we lift that. So after we get above this area, we pretty much trend for the rest of the day, a little bit choppy uh, towards the upside and we closed at the top 80% of this range. And then we start to see big bids into there supporting that 67 area. Cause like, I think the most important moments in this trade have been figured out already. Yeah. And we've already seen them. We saw what happened at 65. We saw what happened at 66, 20. Those are the two most important moments in this trade. So I think, I think the tape is really like knowing exactly that tape and knowing kind of what you see in, in that tape, like, you can put yourself in an amazing position here in this setup, in this trade. So here are my executions. So uh, initially off the opening drive, I bought into 65 risking low of the day. I took 10% off into new highs, like we mentioned, when it rejected that pivot point. I kind of wanted to get a little bit lighter. My thought process was if this was going to be a momentum uh, breakout, that there will be spots to add later in the day. So I could be patient with uh, pretty much adding when I know the trade is working, essentially. I don't have to rush in all at once, and I'd rather pay myself and move my stop up for that 10%. Um, the next area was into 66 and 67. Uh, I got flat into here, which I'm not sure if that was a mistake or not. I think in terms of the overall market, we kind of saw that SPY was selling off, and in the moment, I thought that uh, if it pulls back into 66.20 or 66 around that VWAP, that would be a good spot to add. But I actually hesitated a little bit at that point. And that's why I kind of playbook this trade to kind of highlight that 66.20 can be a tape trade 
uh, for that into there. So, so you hit out because you were worried about spy, right? So you don't even need to add into sixty six twenty. Imagine if you still were holding your seventy percent, right? All of a sudden, you're holding your seventy percent with a lot more conviction. You know, by using the tape. So you're, you you actually don't even need to do anything other than watch the tape and watch on that pull in like does this collapse or not. So, um, you know, it's tough because you always run the risk of what if this reverses and if it reverses, it's frustrating and and that happens. But when you're when you're zoned in on the tape, you can really use that information and you actually don't even need to do anything if you don't want to. You can just say, I'm moving my stop to that 6620 because again, once we see that bidder at 6620 two times, it shouldn't drop there. It should lift and it should lift cleanly and it should go to new highs in a, in a, in a nice fashion. Yeah, that makes sense. But I ended up taking um, some positions when we pulled in around 10 o'clock. Yeah, but those are different trades. Yeah. Right? I don't think I don't think it's worth us getting those confused because like those are different trades. They have worse wish reward. It's already up what um, you know an ATR from the prior day close, uh, three quarters of an ATR from the open. Like those are different trades entirely, and those are more momentum trades, but they're not like the breakout trade. Yeah, that makes sense. But nevertheless, I added into the VWAPs and uh, ended up selling most into this high and took a little bit of an overnight selling into 69.50 the next day. I think you worked too hard. I honestly think you made it too hard on yourself. If you're, if you're saying I'm going to hold 70% and then you're just updating where your stop goes, um, imagine your, what your P&L would look like in this trade. Or I'm going to hold 50%. But then you can piece out of the other 50%. That's fine. Um, but, you know, I think you're working too hard in this setup. You really should be doing a lot of evaluating, does the tape support the setup? Or, I'm sorry, does the tape support the trade? But in this setup, you, you really, and the trade that, that ultimately showed up out of that setup, it looks like you're, you're working a little harder than you need to. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I guess moving on to technology, uh, why I included the earnings report in the intraday fundamentals was uh, we actually see a trend within two to three days or even a week after an earnings report. We've seen the last few quarters that this could trend really aggressively. So uh, that is actually an important back test that I did that kind of gave me a little bit of confidence in this trade. Um, in this market in general, I haven't really seen too many breakouts work. So that's why I kind of was a little bit hesitant and working a little bit too hard on this perhaps. But I think by doing the work and combining the variables for this trade and recognizing that I could be a little bit uh, more hands-off versus what I actually did here, maybe uh, something I could work on, but- Bennett, you're actually... right. You're right. You're absolutely right breakouts in general have not been working as well except for what sectors except for the energy sectors like some of the recession proof stocks perhaps but yep yeah yep those have been working so you have to be careful because it's very easy to make a general statement and say breakouts haven't been working but they haven't in most things um, we saw it today where all the breakouts failed. Um, in oil and in energy, the breakouts have been working. So, um, you know, you want to be very, very specific. So I think there was a few variables working in this favor. The earnings report being one of them and the back test as well, as you could see. So any, uh, some future technology that I could work on is uh, a buy higher script that automatically risks low of the day at a certain price to help manage risk better. Perhaps I could try to experiment with uh, a pull-in script. I don't know how I would try to automate that. I think 
it's a little bit more discretionary and it takes a little bit more practice to do that, but I'm open to hear your thoughts on that. And then the second idea that I had was somewhat of like a consolidation scanner. So like a part of my process is going through a lot of charts on the weekend and basically building a watch list of like consolidations higher, but I actually had an idea that I could somewhat automate that um, by, for example, building a scan, uh, a scanner that if a stock's up three ATRs within one week. So like, for example, this is the oxy chart where we have a momentum breakout here and then uh, basically save that range and then take the next 15 candles that are within the top 80% of the range and then basically set an alert for that. So I'm thinking about coding something or at least testing that out to see if I could do that. You literally could could get a watch list every single day that spits out at the end of the day after the close. Where do you see that price pattern? You can get it to the upside, you can get it to the downside. Yeah. All you would do is take the last 20 candles, you look for a three ATR range from low to high, take 15 of the last 20 candles, take 15 through zero of those candles. Um, those are within you know, the top 80%, the low of that is within the top 80% of the range of the last 20 days. It's, it's a super simple thing that you could do every single day. And at the end of every day, you don't have to wait till the weekend. At the end of every day, you can get a list spit out of these are the names that I want to watch tomorrow. Yeah. That's a really, really good use of technology. Then overall uh, trade review, what did you learn from this trade? So higher time frame technical levels could make a stock in play. And within that setup, there's many trades that you could take. For example, momentum scalp, a trend trade, pull in trades, and combining sector strength uh, relative to other indexes can provide uh, momentum breakouts like we saw here on this Oxy. Uh, so how could you have done better? I think be more open to buying specific pull ins for stopping out just because SPY was weak. At the time, XLE and USO was still strong compared to the SPYs and Qs. So being a little bit more open minded. With that and then overall like we talked about um just being more confident in the core i wouldn't have to be so aggressive buying pull-ins if i could just uh pretty much hold that core a little bit better and be confident in this setup working perhaps um and then how would i trade this uh definitely next time i would probably make separate rules for managing the pull-in trades versus the initial momentum breakout like you said i was working a little bit too hard I think I could completely separate those two trades and build entirely different playbooks for that. So uh, that is something to work on as well. How would you score yourself on this trade? So in terms of execution, perhaps I would give myself a 7 out of 10. But the other elements of this trade, I think I put myself in a pretty good spot by doing the work in terms of uh, charting, identifying that energy was strong this day. I remember uh, in the morning, a lot of traders had very different ideas. So being able to stick with my idea and be confident in that I think was really good. But uh, in terms of execution, I think that's a seven out of 10. Everything else I, I'm pretty happy with as well. So we'll talk through it. I, I, I don't disagree. I think you did a really nice job there. I don't want to undervalue though how important the execution is in this trade. Because one of your unique strengths, Yanni, is the work that you do to put yourself in good stock selection. And really, stock selection is this incredible skill that takes certain traders really, 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 really far. Um, how they enhance that, that skill is through really high quality execution. Um, you know, you've consistently on the calls and, and in, the, in the meetings and stuff, called out really good ideas. And so you're showing that your stock selection is, is really high. Um, maybe one of the best stock selection traders in our group right now, um, just with the consistency of your idea generation, the consistency of seeing things that other people don't do. And it's probably because of the habits that you had. Like you mentioned, you go through the charts on the weekends and you find this the, the setups that make sense to you, right? So stock selection is going to take you really, really far. What's going to help you grow is execution. Um, you know, that's really what's going to help stand out. And on a trade like this, it is 
reading the tape is not like a, a questionable, like, can I get away with not being able to read the tape here? You really can't. You, you have to be able to read the tape really well and you have to be able to trust yourself to see the information on the tape and make really informed trading decisions based on that. So that said, um, stock selection, I think for this setup, 10 out of 10. Um, you know, you, you have the catalyst with the earnings, you, you have the, the setup with the higher time frame, and then you have the, the trade. So all three of those line up really well for stock selection. Uh, big picture, nine out of 10. Trade strategy, I thought your trade strategy was really good at 10 out of 10. Um, you know, your execution, I think it broke down quite a bit, but you talked about the ATRs, you talked about the, the moves, you had the, uh, the back test to support all that. So I think your trade strategy was really good. Intraday fundamentals, nine out of 10. Um, technical analysis, I, I thought eight out of 10 here. Um, two things that I thought were interesting. One, I love the fact that you use the hourly levels and, and you knew the time frame that this breakout should occur, which was at an hourly, basically, time frame. Um, you know, it's a daily breakout, but it's also like an hourly setup as well. And you recognize that. Um, I think you use Bollinger Bands on the hourly. Was that right? So Bollinger Bands are technology, right? Like you should lean into that more. You should really understand exactly what the Bollinger Bands mean. You should be able to articulate, this is why it means this. This is what should happen on a breakout of a Bollinger Band consolidation. Uh, I, you know, this, would, this is what should happen if it's trading above an upper Bollinger Band. This is what these mean. You know, that's technology. Um, when anybody is using an indicator at all, you know, the only bad use of an indicator is if you don't actually really, really understand it. Because indicators are just mathematical equations that, you know, kind of are, have, have purpose for the people that invented them. But if you don't really understand why you're using it and what that means, you, you, you shouldn't be using it. You should be taking it off your screen. Um, but if you do, it can be a huge source of edge. So imagine if you just did Bollinger Band consolidations or whatever they call them. Like, like you know, you should lean into that if it's something you do. Um, reading the tape, nine out of 10. The, this is a tape trade. There is zero hesitation in my mind of all of the information you need to see in order to make a good decision is going to be presented to you in the tape on this trade. You've done the work to identify the right catalyst. You've done the work to identify the right setup. You've done the work to see the right trade. All of the information that you need in this trade will show up in the tape. And we saw it. We saw it on the initial breakout. We saw it on the huge offers that stacked that gave us a clue that if this lift, it might be interesting. We saw it on the pull-in that didn't really break down and it rebid. We saw it on the higher hold. And then we even saw it on that consolidation on a higher time frame with the breakout of the 6620 or whatever it was, um, you know, that double test there. So this is a tape trade. And if you're going to make this trade, trade, you really need to be good at reading the tape because it's going to give you all the information you need to, to know there. Um, trade management, I agree, 7 out of 10. Um, you worked way harder than you needed to for this setup in this trade. Um, you just did. Like, you should be monitoring it the entire time, but you shouldn't be working that hard. That's... Once you start monkeying around it with those like trying to catch the momentum after it's already moved basically an ATR and kind of the breakout started, you're more likely to just kind of break even or lose money than you are to actually like really be build P and L. So be sure you know that. Um, review nine out of ten diligence um, nine out of ten. So overall, I had you at an eighty nine. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of really good um, in this playbook. There's a ton of good in this playbook. Um, but I think that there are a couple of things that you, you know and you've called out that need cleaning up for you to keep growing and to keep moving forward. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And the biggest thing is just going to be this execution. Like, I think at this point, at the end of the day, um, I was up 4R in this trade. This could easily be something that is like 10R, for example. So that should uh, be the goal. Yeah. Like, honestly, in a trade like this that does exactly what you want to see, you should forget the idea of how much am I up in this trade? Am I up 4R? No, the goal is, is if the trade's doing what it should do, you should be making as much money as possible. That's it. Like you shouldn't be limiting yourself with, with you know, the thought of how many R am I up or any of that stuff. Like this trade is a trade that if it's going to do what it's going to do, 
It's going to be a nice trend. It's going to show up on the tape. And your job is going to be, I want to, I want to hold on as long as I possibly can with as much size as possible until I have a real reason to sell. And that could easily be, like you said, a 10 R trade without you doing any more work than you already did. Hey, go ahead and click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos they're producing for you in the trading community. And please take the time to add your feedback in the comment section for what videos you'd like for us to produce next and what you found helpful from this video from all of us at SMB. Train and trade well.